Hi, good morning everybody. Robert Bruton with the Robert Bruton Outdoor Show. And I wanted to just kind of do a little vlog post this morning, not really get too much into a trailer, although I'm in an RV. Uh, I just wanted to talk about, there are so many people migrating to RVs to actually live in. And there are some things that you ought to know. Um, it's, um, it's not a bad way to live, absolutely not. Uh, it's actually kind of cool. Um, but there are some things that you'll have to give up and some things that you'll need to know uh, before you're going in. Because most trailers, you have to remember, there's a reason it's called an RV. RV is short for recreational vehicle. So you have recreational air conditioners, recreational heaters, and things like that. Those are going to be stretched to the limit when you're uh, deciding to live in it. Okay, There are full-time RVs. Uh, for example, a Keystone Montana is a great uh, uh, unit. I'm in, I'm in a Keystone Fusion right now, toy hauler. Um, you know, there are, there are trailers, there are fifth wheels and things that are built for full-time living. There's also what are called destination-style trailers. Um, you might uh, check into a destination-style. If this is a trailer that you're just going to take somewhere, set it, forget it, and be done, then a destination trailer is really what you ought to look at. Um, they live a little bit more like a home. Um, they have residential refrigerators and things like that. So let's kind of go through, this is kind of if you don't know or if you're considering uh, living in an RV, um, there's some things that you ought to know. Um, if you tell the manufacturer that you're living in it, okay, when it's time to do warranty work, there's a good chance that it's going to void the warranty. So check into that before you make a purchase. Also look into the uh, uh, extended service programs. I cannot stress enough, I would not buy an RV without an extended service policy, okay? There's a lot of really expensive things in an RV and things that you wouldn't consider, like right behind me is this uh, refrigerator, very expensive to replace, slide motors. Um, this unit has an onboard generator. Now, 99% of RVs do not come with some sort of generator, so you really don't have to worry about that unless you're buying a uh, toy hauler. Uh, but, you know, stoves, ovens, there's convection microwave ovens, TVs, stereo systems, plumbing, electrical. There's a lot of things to worry about so it's a good thing to have a service program and make sure that they are the service program you're buying is full-timer friendly okay um words like uh i'm living in it are kisses of death for a lot of reasons okay because these are not designed to live in so keep that in mind whenever you're uh looking at trailers that you're buying something that is designed more towards a full-timer uh experience okay um the other thing is is that you need to look at there's there's a travel trailer which is a bumper pull style trailer fifth wheels which takes a three-quarter ton or one ton truck to pull that's where you put the the tongue back into the bed of the truck on a uh, uh, what, what's called a kingpin and uh, there's toy haulers and there's motor homes um, there's good and bad with all of them just like anything okay um, Motorhomes tend to not sit well for long periods of time, so motorhomes are really designed for that. They need to be running down the road. So um, I tend to see a lot of folks talk to me about motorhomes, and I'm not saying motorhomes are bad, but motorhomes are tons of fun. But if they sit, they can become real money pits, okay? So uh, just kind of watch out for that. That's really not what it's designed to do. Um, a toy hauler gives you the garage feature uh, in a fifth wheel or pull behind trailer uh, that could be used as additional storage um, Here's the thing and I kind of want to touch on this real quick too. storage in an RV. That's at a premium Okay, again, it's designed to be a recreational vehicle for use for part-time stuff for camping You know for weeks at a time not you know months or years at a time so, you know, you have to really get creative with how you're going to store your stuff. So as you're out there looking, just know that like travel trailers, for example, normally in the bedroom, all they're going to have is a couple wardrobes and a shelf space. Um, if you're uh, a big clothes person, this is going to become 
challenging for you to say the least. Um, so take a look at what you can do, you know, ask around at the campground that you're looking at or the RV park that you're looking at. Can you have an outdoor uh, hang up storage? And you're going to have to find, you know, like Rubbermaid, I think, makes a pretty nice sealed in uh, uh, storage. So a lot of places will allow you to have outdoor storage uh uh, buildings and things like that so you know you do have to get a little bit creative in how you're going to get all your stuff uh, kitchen space uh, for those of you uh, men and women who like to cook uh, kitchen space is also at a premium as far as cabinet space all right and that's going to hold true throughout a lot of, of uh, RVs pardon me um, you're going to uh, see in fifth wheels where you get a lot more uh, that's designed for longer term uh, uh, folks that are full time uh, where you're going to get a lot more cabinet space and things like that. Travel trailers are hard to, to make a full time uh, uh, use out of because they simply are just not big enough to hold all the stuff that most folks have when they're trying to live. So if you're willing to downsize a lot, OK, putting your stuff in storage. All right, because maybe this is going to be a short-term remedy uh, for you, but you need, you know, the next year or two or three, you know, um, then RV living's a lot of fun, okay? Um, it really is. It's just you're going to have to, like I said, keep making a little bit of adjustments here and there, uh, clothes, storage in the kitchen, that kind of thing. Uh, so you have to kind of look around and shop around to see what you're going to be able to do. And then talk to the... Uh, RV park where you're thinking about putting your RV and ask them about, you know, temporary storage buildings or temporary storage houses that you can put out beside your trailer uh, and uh, keep your stuff uh, more there. But, you know, simply if you're willing to, to downsize, this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay. I live in a trailer. I live in a fifth wheel. Um, you know, it's uh what's working out best for me right now and I'm enjoying living in it. I don't know that I want to stay in it forever, but it is very much fun right now. I'm having a good time. My dogs love it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a cool experience. So that's the way I'm looking at it is this is a new life experience, something fun to do. So I'm enjoying it. I have a Laredo and I really, really enjoy it. It's a nice trailer and it's well built. Um, so, you know, you just have to know that, that you're coming into a situation that is a RV, a recreational vehicle, and not a full-time home. I get a lot of people talking to me about this, and they're saying, well, it doesn't have this. It has no storage space. I know. It's a camper, okay? It's not a house. Here's the other thing, okay? You need to, a lot of your bigger trailers are going to have electric space heaters, very nice ones, okay? Um, smaller trailers are not. So you're going to need to look into ceramic uh, uh, space heaters during the winter and also a decent fan in the summer. Another thing that I had to do because I'm out in West Texas right now is because of the in excruciating heat on some days, especially if you're in Arizona, anywhere where, where you're in a hot climate, here's a couple things that you're going to need to know. Um, you're going to need a, a fan for sure, not a box fan. Box fans are loud and noisy and they don't move real air. You're going to need to spend a little money and get a decent uh, fan that moves a lot of air. Uh, Verado makes a great fan. You'll see, uh, I'm putting some of the things that I'm talking about, I'm putting links to those items down in the description so you can go take a look at them, look at costs and things like that and see what I'm talking about specifically. Um, the other thing is you're going to need, in, during the summer when it's super, super hot, okay, um, you're going to need to put some thermal uh, blankets in the uh, window. There are RV specific thermal, uh, that's like the stuff you put in your car windshield to protect your car. Same thing here. It's only on the sides where you get direct sunlight, okay, does it really become a problem, but it helps a lot. The other thing that you need to look at is I actually had to go out and buy a portable air conditioner. Um, I got it at uh, Home Depot and basically it, it's not a window unit, but it vents through a window. So it looks a little bit do it yourself for sure where I had to put it on the window. It's not very pretty, but it helps supply additional air conditioning on an electrical power source that I ran a uh, extension cord from that over to the uh, 
uh, RV hookup pole and I plugged it in there not in my trailer that way I'm not taking away amps I can run both my ACs if I need to plus the third one because it's not plugged into the coach and, and sucking down amps so that I'm blowing breakers so you hook it outside okay um, it works really well I bought an 8000 BTU I honestly wish I had bought the 10,000 BTU um, so I, I may put mine on Craigslist, sell it, and see if I can go out and get a 10,000 BTU. I think with just a little more oomph, I probably wouldn't have to run my ACs in my coach as much as I do uh, during the really super hot months. And when it's 108, 110 outside, I'm sorry, but all bets are off. You're not going to have an ice cold coach to come home to. You're not going to have an excruciatingly hot coach to come home to, but it's not going to be, you know, ice cold. Remember, these are RVACs. So up in the roof, they're going to be RVACs. So they're not, again, they're not designed to run full time. Now, in some of your nicer coaches, uh, Montana, Cedar Creeks, things like that, you will find. Uh, uh, you know, a little nicer uh, AC units and some of the new ACs that are coming out that we're going to do some uh, video uh, vlogs on are pretty amazing. Okay. They're actually smaller BTUs, use less amperage, but put out the same as a larger unit. Okay. So it's pretty cool. Um, you're going to see people switching. You're going to see manufacturers switching from BTUs to how much tonnage you're getting through because most folks are going to go, I'm not buying anything less than a 15,000 BTU AC. Roll with the times, you guys. <laughs> Roll with the flow. Uh, as technology gets better, like right now, I'm shooting on a GoPro Hero 7. Normally, I would do my, my DSLR camera or my iPhone uh, 10 and 4K, but right now I'm shooting... Uh, on my GoPro Hero because it's new and I want to try it out. So um, it's pretty cool. It has a little wider uh, lens. It's real light. It's easy for me to carry. It's T tiny small. Okay. Uh, it's not the best sound. Uh, I do like the sound from it. It's better than the old GoPros, but it's uh, like I said, you just kind of got to roll with the flow. All right. So, you know, you're going to have to help up like using ceramic heaters, uh, uh, you know, a good fan that blows, that moves air, not that it's loud. Box fans are crap. Don't buy them. Okay. Get yourself a decent fan. I put down below, uh, all the stuff that, again, like all the stuff that we're talking about. So you can go take a look and see what you think. Um, what else can I tell you? Well, storage and that type of thing. Other than that, you know, it's going to live like a house. You know, you're going to have a nice big bed. Uh, here's the other thing with an RV bed. If you buy an expensive trailer, you're going to get a decent mattress, not a great mattress. If you buy an, a lesser expensive travel trailer, stuff like that, you're getting a weekend piece of junk mattress. Let's just call it what it is, okay? Um, you're probably going to need to put in your budget for a mattress. Uh, remember that RV queens are smaller than a residential queen. Uh, so you want to look and, and make sure you get the appropriate size. A lot of trailers you can put a full queen bed in, but you have to look at slides and things and make sure that, that, that it's going to fit in the space or be able to, as you're bringing in the slide, lift the mattress up so it doesn't hit a uh, chest of drawers and things like that. So there's some things you need to think about. Uh, again, if you down in the deal, if you have questions, go to my website and there's a place where you can contact me and ask me all the questions that you need. And I'm always open. I answer everybody. So thank you for your questions. I appreciate it. And I will answer you. So make sure that you uh, uh, reach out to me with any questions that you have and I can guide you in the right direction. I may not always have the correct answer, but I can find it. That's for sure. been doing this a long time. So please reach out. I got a lot of nice folks that I work with in the industry that will absolutely help you. No problem. So the mattress is something that you probably want to at some point in time, you know, if you buy a brand new trailer, you know, wear it out, but it's probably not going to be a very comfy mattress like you have at home. You might measure your home mattress. So when you go out shopping, take a tape measure with you. Okay. One of the things that I always get with uh, folks that are looking at RVs, they, they always forget to bring out a tape measure. So bring a tape measure so that you can measure the space uh, if you have anything specific from your home. Um, TVs, swapping out TVs. Most of the TVs that come at you get nice, a decent TV in a travel trailer or a, or a fifth wheel. Here's the thing you need to remember. When it's moving, make sure that the TV that you're bringing, let's say you spent 
two or three thousand dollars on some fancy 4k tv gotta have it now will it take and withstand remember this is a little earthquake going on back here whenever you're pulling it down the road so if you're moving a lot okay are going to be moving the trailer you need to make sure that the tv can withstand the the oomps the bumps and things down the road that it's going to have so a lot of a lot of tvs can't stand that pressure you know you get the rv tvs they're built a little tougher so that they can withstand um, the treatment that they get so you may have to to do a little compromising there most of the tvs will accept you know video play or uh, uh, i should say video game players playstations xboxes things like that um you know it, again you may have to do a little bit of well the unit's going to have to sit on the floor there's not sometimes there's not cabinet space and things like that because remember this was built for you to use on weekends for a vacation. They don't think you're going to be in here all the time watching TV. Okay. Um, internet. Okay. Everybody, this is the biggest question that I ever get. What about internet? Okay. You can get uh, subscription service internet that goes with the coach. What I recommend is if you're going to do that, that's a nice temporary fix. The, the plans are a little pricey um, because it is a temp service, okay? It's a month-to-month -month thing. Um, you can still, if you get your coach and you talk to the cable company, you most likely can get uh, uh, upgraded cable. Most parks will allow you, if you're going to be there for extended terms, to add. They like give you basic cable, but you can add you know, your premium channels, and you can talk to them about adding a... Uh, uh, cable driven uh, uh, DS or uh, internet service okay um, you some coaches come with internet capability as far as having like a booster and a subscription some of them don't I do notice a lot coming out in this late part of 2019 and going into 2020 that's going to be a standard feature in many many coaches okay again uh, the the month-to-month -month subscription can be a little pricey if you're a big binge watcher on Netflix or something like that um, you know you may have to tone that down a little bit or get the appropriate subscription that does it or see about getting a, a more reasonable service okay um, it's not that it's a bad service it's just and it's working off of cell towers just so you know it's it's not a cable driven thing um, the stuff that comes in your coach is going to work off of uh, data towers so you can get uh, unlimited but you can get like 10 gigs and 20 gigs 50 gigs and so on um, unlimited is going to get you up there and get you a little pricey but that's you know uh, if you want the internet, sometimes we got to pay to play. Um, but you can't, like I said, talk to your cable company, talk to the park provider. A lot of parks provide uh, free Wi-Fi. Now, here's the problem with free Wi-Fi, uh, apart from the security risks that you have, okay, in using uh, public Wi-Fi, here's the thing. When everybody gets home between, you know, 5 and 6 o'clock and everybody's checking their emails and uh, talking, you know, FaceTime and doing this, doing that, uh, you know, getting on and, and playing on the internet, uh, then that gets bogged down, okay? So if you need something that's more secure and something that you need, if you work out of your trailer, you really need to talk to the park host and see what you can get there at the park, okay? Um, cable TV is the same thing. Ask them about upgrading. If you want premium cable channels, then ask them about, you know, uh, HBO, Showtime, what does it cost, and how do I get that, and that type of thing. Your park host will be able to give you some uh, idea about what that is. If you're moving it out on a caliche pad or something like that, uh, out on, you know, three or four acres of land, that kind of thing, then obviously talk with your local provider because you're going to be able to get everything that you could get in a home. You're going to be able to get in here. And lastly, I'm going to kind of wind this up and then hopefully you guys will just send me your questions uh, more than anything because I don't want to bore you with more, more stuff. But let's talk about washer and dryer, okay? Um, travel trailers, very few travel trailers have a washer dryer connection. If they do, normally it's for what's called a standalone. That means it washes and dries all in one unit. There's good and bad with these things. First off, a standalone unit, you might be able to wash a pair of jeans and a shirt, uh, maybe some socks and underwear, and that's about it. You will not be able to wash linens. You will not be able to wash a coat. Uh, you will not be able to wash towels unless you want to wash one at a time, 
okay? And here's the problem. They're small. The tumbler inside the, the little RV thing is small. So when it spins it dry, it's not fluffing. It's just sticking it there. So when it dries, when you pull it out, uh, you're going to be ironing for a little while. So just, <laughs> just putting that out there, okay? Um, you can get in the bigger fifth wheels, you can get a, a standalone units, a washer and separate dryer. Uh, the dryer's a little bigger, so it'll fluff. But again, you're going to be doing small loads. Um, it's They're normally fairly expensive to buy. Um, most parks have a, uh, a uh, laundromat, sorry. Uh, so you can get a laundromat and use the laundromat. It's going to be a lot less expensive. You're going to be able to do your laundry much quicker. Um, if you just need... Uh, uh, you know, a, a thing or two washed every now and again. It's nice if it if you can put a, a stackable washer and dryer in your budget. Great. If you can't, then don't worry about it because it's really not all that in a bag of chips. I mean, they uh, they they they're nice uh, if you're full time and if you were traveling and you're washing shirts and shorts, excuse me, and t-shirts, uh, you know, socks, that kind of thing, underwear, you know, just little things. Hey, knock yourself out. It, it it's worth it because you you don't have to go to the laundromat nearly as much. The only time you're going to have to go to the laundromat is when you need to do big linens. You need to do your linens and towels. And then if you only have to do linens and towels, you're going to be there an hour and a half. So instead of two or three hours doing all your laundry, so you know it's up to you how you want to do it. But um, laundry can be a real uh, uh, challenge in a small RV because remember these are not home units. Again. RV washer and dryer. They are not st the stackable that you think's in apartments. No, these are RV washer and dryer. So take a look. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some stuff again in the description for you guys to look at and uh, see what you think about all that. But like I said, you have so many people migrating over to living in an RV that I really wanted to talk a little bit about it, you know, and make sure that you understand that you are living in a recreational vehicle. You can do it. You're just going to have to uh, get creative with space and things like that. So I hope you found this uh, helpful. And if you, again, if you have any questions, I'm going to have a link to the website down below. Please, if you liked this video and it was helpful, like it for me, please, and subscribe to the channel. I would love for you to be the first to get uh, uh, notifications that we got new videos up. And if you're a camper, climber, skier, that kind of thing, if you're into outdoors, hey, this is where you need to be. The Robert Bruton Outdoor Show. And I am your host, Robert Bruton. And again, thank you so much. And we'll talk again real soon. Happy camping.